Hello, YouTube. It's Nicole from BI Consulting Services. Super excited to be here with you. Hoping to keep this content as short as possible, but there's a few nuances uh, I want to show you here. But this video is all around how you can filter your data down uh, based on the user who's logged in. Oftentimes when we're building apps or any sort of development, we probably want to restrict the data down to a certain degree. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how to filter your data so that users can only see information that's relevant to them. So we got asked about this sort of content. I think this is what folks want. So how do you filter the data down based on roles? You asked for it. You're getting it. I'm super excited to share this content with you. If you have questions or if you have content that you want us to touch on, first subscribe to our channel. Hit the subscribe button and then ask, right? Say, hey, Nicole, can you do videos on this or can you put content together on this? And we'll get it together and we'll, we'll actually create content around it. Um, you guys are important to us. We want to develop content that you can use out in your jobs. Um, if you're hitting a roadblock, give us a shout. We'll put up that content. I'm sure you're not the only person interested in it. So we want to be able to help you and we want to be able to help others. So it's a win-win uh, for everyone. And we want folks to watch our content, right? So we've got about 90,000 views on our YouTube channel to date. We want that to continue to grow, so we want to bring out content that's helpful to you. So Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate, or something in that SQL sector generally are where we're putting a lot of our video content together. So if you want something in that area, give us a shout. All right, so on my screen, really quick, I'm just going to kind of level set. We're going to create an entire app from scratch. So we're going to do it from start to finish together here on this video. Um, I'm on our YouTube video, sort of our generic uh, YouTube SharePoint that we use for content creation. Um, I'm going to use this issue tracker uh, list that I've created, but just to, in case you're interested and you want to follow along with me, this is how I did that. I went out to uh, lists, created new, and then I actually just went ahead and created from a template. Uh, so I used the issue tracker template that you see here on the screen. So nothing too crazy. I just kind of used that and it created the content that I'm about to show to you now. Uh, here's the actual table. I put four records in there, nothing too big, uh, and this is what we'll use to actually uh, display data within our Power App. All right, so we'll go over to a new, um, just into Power Apps, we'll create a new Canvas app. As you guys probably know already, I'm super creative, so I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> call this something simple. Uh, we'll keep it in tablet format for this for this one, too. All right, so the very first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and get data, uh, the data that I want to have within this app. So there's a couple of things that are important for this one because we're going to do some role-based filtering or security. And then the other thing is we're going to you know, use the SharePoint list that, that I just displayed to you guys. So we're going to go to SharePoint first. Once we get into SharePoint, just find the location where your content is. In this case, I'm going to YouTube videos, and I'm going to grab this issue tracker one that we've, uh, I just displayed for you guys a moment ago, and we'll connect to it. And then the other location that I want to go to is Office 365 users and connect to that as well. Okay, so in this one, I'm not going to do any fancy, um, you know, development. If you guys are interested in me creating sort of an app from scratch that kind of looks halfway nice <laughs> uh, from a content standpoint, let me know. I think a lot of that is out and online, though. But if you're interested or you want to see it, let me know. I'm just going to show you from the basic standpoint of here's a table I'm going to show you the filter uh, formulas you need to use to get that to filter down so that users only see their data when they go in. Uh, so I'm keeping it fairly straightforward here. We're not going to get into any UI or UX uh, components of this, just the formulas that are needed to get your job done. So we'll go ahead and pull the issues tracker data in here, and we'll select specific columns because we don't need all of this data. So I'm going to remove the attachments. The issued by is blank as well here in the data set. So is this, so is the issue source, I think date reported might be in there. Okay, so those are the fields that are kind of present uh, right now. And the other field that I want to bring in is the created by field, because that's going to actually be the field that in this video, um, a lot of our calculations are driven from and filtered from. 
Uh, oftentimes, it, you know, the created by a person may not be the person that it's associated with. For example, I typically wouldn't submit uh, tickets for myself in our ticket tracking system. I'd probably have someone else do it for me, maybe. And so in that instance, uh, you would use the created by field to kind of recognize who uh, this is associated with or who we need uh, to have visibility into this actual record. So in this case, we're going to use created by. Uh, we could do this based on a couple of other fields. Assigned to is another great one. It's email driven to. Um, it really just depends on what your use case is. But in this case, we're going to use created by for simplicity's sake. So to get started, I'm just going to take you through just sort of basic filter criteria. Nothing fancy, but I just want to show you sort of how the the filtering actually works inside of Power Apps. Uh, so I'm actually inside the data table here now. So I can actually go out here and hit the filter option uh, and then basically say, hey, let's filter down uh, this actual data set by the created by person. Don't want to dot there. We want a comma. We'll grab the created by column, which is just the column that comes directly from the data set that we uh, just pulled in. And in this case, I'm just going to uh, try and filter it down by my name and email or by my email address. Uh, you may actually have like a unique identifier that you use across your company, like an employee ID number that you want your data to be filtered down by. Um, you know, all of that's doable. I'm just really trying to show you here just some basic um, mechanisms in which you can filter data down. This is fairly straightforward. Um, but just shows you kind of how the, the calculation stuff works inside of the, the Power App itself. So the next thing I'm going to do is just insert a simple text box because we're going to use that in this example uh, for some additional uh, filter criteria that we're going to display. So we're going to actually start to use that Office 365 uh, data set that we just pulled in uh, as we kind of move along in the video. So we're going to just say, okay, go out to the Office 365 data set, pull from my profile, and then look for the field that you want to use that's relevant to you guys. It may be an ID field. In this case, we're going to use mail. And the very first thing that you're going to notice here, and we're just going to copy this code, but I wanted to be able to display it for you too, just so you can kind of see what's going on. Uh, it just pulls in my email address, right? So it's it recognizes that I'm the one signed in here within this environment. And so it's saying, okay, let me go and pull the email or the mail address for this particular profile. So fairly straightforward, right? So now we can go in and we've hard-coded this data so far, right? So we've said, okay, just go out and, you know, grab records specific to Nicole.mic at Power BI Consulting Services. So we've kind of hard-coded it. Well, we want to make this dynamic, right? We don't want it to be hard-coded. That's not super helpful. Uh, so let's change it just a little bit so that it is actually dynamic. All right, so we've changed that out. All we did was grab the code that we wrote here and dropped it inside the data table as a filter criteria. So the only issue here is you will get a warning. Um, if I hover over this warning, it'll tell you what it is, and I'll show you the other way you can look at this if you're interested. But this filter is part of a formula, and if it's a large data set, it will not work. That's the error message that's going on. And if you kind of expand out those details a bit, it'll kind of go back through it and tell you, hey, this isn't going to work on large data sets. Some of us might say, well, what is your definition of a large data set? Great question. <laughs> and so if you look a little bit further down, you'll see that large data sets are sort of derived by the criteria of it being a, I think, 2,000 records or more. Uh, so 
Uh, if you have more than 2,000 records, this isn't going to be the ideal approach. And so I'm going to show you a different way to go about it. Oftentimes, if you're using, you know, power apps and you're pulling in a ton of data, which a lot of us are, uh, this filter won't work. And so I wanted to kind of show you that error message, show you were familiar with it. Um, but now I'll kind of take you through an additional approach uh, that may work for you if you're looking to uh, use more than 2,000 records of data. Okay, so now we're inside the screen. And we're going to go ahead and do a on visible option here really quick. And we're just going to put in a quick set code. So we'll do set. And we will put in basically very similar code to what we've used a couple of times as we've been going through these videos uh, or through the video. We'll do my profile. We'll do the Office 365. Um, let's see. Oh, we need to use a comma, not a period. We'll do 365 users dot my profile. And we'll go ahead and close this up just like we have been doing, and we'll do dot .mail. All right, and we'll close this up here, and then we'll just be done there. And then we will go into this particular app where we've got this filter criteria in place right now, right, that's kind of giving us that cautionary error message. And we will do a simple change here where it's just, oh, I took too much out, where we do equals and we do my profile instead of all the details that are out there now. So we'll grab that, close up this. Um, it's a little glitchy right now, I've noticed. Um, so what I'm going to do is just show you how this works once it's published. But again, we've kind of put this on visible screen as set, and it's connected to your mail. Uh, and then we've got sort of this additional layer here where we're filtering it down based on email, really driven by this set variable that's out here. Uh, and it's in your variable section too. So if you got here and you kind of look, you'll see that variable is displayed there. Uh, but really quick, we'll save this. We will publish this now. And then we're going to go out and we're going to look at this sort of live and in action. Uh, so I think that's the best way to do it. So we'll go out to Power Apps. We'll sign in, and if you recall, there are four issues out here, two from myself, two from our big support. We'll go out to the actual app. We'll go to the video that, or the, the content that we created just now, and as you can see, it's filtered down to just show data that I've, or inputs that I've created myself. So it dynamically filters your data down. Hopefully this was helpful and informative to you. If you have questions, or if I didn't get to something that you're super interested in, let me know, um, and we're happy to do it. This is Nicole signing out from BI Consulting Services. Catch you next time.